Diana Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen, Diana Kennedy, Reverend Diana Kennedy. That was exciting. Woohoo. Thank you, Shad. Well, here we are in the historic Fillmore Chapel, and I'm wondering how many of you know that this is the only place on campus where both Charles and Myrtle Fillmore preached and taught. Did you know that? Well, it is true. So we are in a sacred space, a beautiful space. And, you know, it brings me back to the first time I visited Unity Village, which was 2005 um, for me. I'm not sure what year it was for you, but this beautiful sacred um, space uh, coming here for SEE classes and for ministerial classes and our uh, chapel services. And of course, we've had staff meetings in here. So it's just wonderful connecting again this second half of the second day of annual summit. Hope your lunch was good and that the annual summit is feeding you. Can I get an amen? Yes. So welcome everyone. And I want to thank you for your interest in and your dedication to uh, the unity movement, the unity teachings, and to our unity ministries as well. And it is juicy to come together. Um, this event has grown. We've got over 200 people online, over 300 people registered, and plus the room filled with fabulous energy. And it's just great seeing your faces and coming together to, um, to share and to grow and to take our movement where it has not yet gone to those new places, to a place of expansiveness and a place of service. So my presentation this afternoon is focused on aligning with, got a little echo here. My presentation is aligning, about aligning with the money that funds our mission, that funds our impactful work. It is titled Generosity and the Psychology of Giving. So we truly embody the energy of giving as we allow ourselves to receive. You know, you've heard that phrase, it's two sides of the same coin. Well, it's two aspects of the same universal flow, giving and receiving. So the more comfortable we become with receiving, the more comfortable we, come, we become with, with giving as well. So let's put ourselves into what I call receivership training. Where we're learning to receive. Have you ever been in receivership training? Maybe, maybe you've thought about it during a self-care class. Um, if not, or maybe we can just begin again today. And we're all now in receivership training, seeing how much we can allow ourselves to receive. We can allow ourselves to receive uh, compliments, gifts, and blessings from the divine. And that puts us on what we know to be an evolutionary journey and participating in that cycle of giving and receiving. I see it almost as a, um, an infinity symbol. It's just this flow, this ever flow coming in and out of our hearts and our consciousness. So a little bit about me. I'm a unity minister, a longtime truth student, um, I'm the Development and Engagement Coordinator at Unity Worldwide Ministries. I perform care and connection outreach to our ministries and to our credentialed leaders, to families of those who've lost um, a loved one in Unity. And I'm passionate about growing the Unity movement. And I'm passionate about uh, expanding consciousness as well. I love performing research in the course of my work, and I've gathered a lot of data around the shifts that are happening on the planet and how our movement and our values fit into those shifts that are unfolding on the planet. We can see evidence of this in the world as well. And I'm so honored to be a part of this global transformation. Sometimes I think we forget the larger movement that we're connected to, um, whether we are a student and we've got our assignments in front of us or we're a minister with tasks and to-do lists and people to call and um, even running a whole congregation, we may feel disconnected from the greater movement, but yet at the same time, we are, we are so connected. I've been in unity for 32 years now. And so I can recall my minister telling me about the village and I saw pictures of the village um, in my ministry. And then when I started working for unity of Tallahassee, I was trained um, how to write my tithe to Unity Worldwide Ministries and to Unity World Headquarters and Silent Unity and to, and quarterly, it was uh, the regional offices. So I can look back 
over the years and see the connection that um, we had with Unity Worldwide Ministries at the time was Association of Unity Churches. So I've been here at the village for 15 years now. I say at the village, you know, I live in the Lee Summit area, but I still almost think that I live at the village because it feels like I live at the village. Um, so I've been in the at Lee Summit, Kansas City, Unity Village area for 15 years. Uh, this week, yeah, a little clap. It was mid-year meetings that week. That's what it used to be called, this gathering here, mid-year meetings. And we were planning the minister's tea. And so I got drawn into that um, fundraising event, actually. And what a memory. Um, it was also really, really cold, but I've gotten used to gotten used to that. So it's been amazing to see the um, transformation of the events we hold and the, the people that come through, the students that come through, the speakers, and of course, the wonderful people that I get to um, work with at Unity Worldwide Ministries, the people. It's often about the people. We could probably even say that together. It's often about the people. It makes our heart happy and helps us keep going. So I'm going to dive in a little bit on the power of words. So drink these in. Love, life, healing, truth, unity. We can feel the energy of these words. They have power. And these words as well, abundance, generosity, kindness, curiosity, growth, innovation, service, transformation. I love words. <laughs> you know, Bernadette has retired and she's the goddesses of words and meanings and, and I love words too. So I love words. So in, in her popular book of the same name, Florence Scovel Shin shared this. She said, your word is your wand. Your word is your wand. And it's true. Our words shape our uh, life and the world in which we live. So your word is your wand and my word is my wand. Our words give us the power to, to make a distinction, to make a request, to ask of the universe, to support, to communicate. Our words are, are just mm, juicy. Our words are juicy. I like that word too, juicy. So, and we know from scripture that our words do not return to us void. Our thoughts, our words, our feelings radiate energy. And as Charles Fillmore said, words are also seeds. And when dropped into the invisible spiritual substance, they grow and bring forth after their kind. Myrtle Fillmore's awakening took her on a deep, deep journey into the cells of her body, revealing the power of thought and prayer. It's what launched a whole movement. She demonstrated that words bring us into a state of presence, a state of flow. You may be familiar with the book called Flow. And I've been practicing saying the author's name. And I looked it up on Google because Google will tell you anything. I thought it was Mahali or Mahali Shishkin Mahali. And I thought that that was pretty good pronunciation. But I looked it up and I listened and it's Mahai Chikshin Mahai. He wrote the book Flow and some others about that state of being that allows us to feel um, curious and open and receptive to our good, open to innovative ideas. And he actually did some research and he discovered that people prefer to be in a state of flow. Now you would think, well, yeah, I would prefer to be in a state of flow, but I've ever awakened in the morning and thought, I prefer to be in a state of flow today. It's true. You know, we get to choose our word at the white stone ceremony at the beginning of the year. Flow is a good word. I choose to be in flow. And I am the one who has power over my own consciousness to help bring that about. So now I'm saying in the morning, I choose to be in a state of flow. So what he did to determine this was he had um, his, he had some research subjects and this was back in the eighties and the nineties when people carried pagers. And so he had his research subjects, um, carry pagers and he paged them throughout the day and he asked them you know what they were doing and how they were doing and then later um, in the day he asked what they preferred and so they said they preferred to feel good so that's not surprising but it was a very interesting people do prefer a calm yet energizing or calm yet alert uh, state of being which helps them to be resilient even in the face of obstacles 
or challenges. So, I mean, I think we all know that it is, uh, it behooves us to set up our lives in a way that invites in that state of flow, that invites in that state of uh, resourcefulness and resilience, but sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't happen that way, right? Sometimes our day kind of goes awry and we can bring ourselves back. So the same way of being, this state of flow brings about resourcefulness and supports the act of giving and receiving. I know I feel much more um, comfortable giving when I feel relaxed about my life, when I feel um, centered, when I feel empowered, safe, creative, and curious, open. And same with receiving. Otherwise, what do we do? Someone compliments us and we say, mm, no, I just got this at a consignment store. Or, oh, no, I really do need to get my hair done. So somehow blocking our good. But in receivership training, we can pay attention to how we are receiving others, how we receive the compliments and the good, and, and then see how many blessings flow our way, and then share that idea. And then perhaps more of that giving and receiving will, will um, unfold. So a little quote by Charles uh, Fillmore, who said this, he said, be still and know that you are one with a substance and with the law. So through flow, we can relax into a sense of trust and well-being. And from this awareness, from this relaxed yet alert state, we can dive even deeper and learn and grow and learn to, to uh, kind of shake it off and then be more open to that um, giving and receiving. Henry Nowen's teachings are a powerful influence in the lives of many ministers and seminarians. How many of you have read any of Henry Nowen's work? A few, great, several, handful. Uh, he wrote The Spirituality of Fundraising. He also wrote You Are the Beloved. He really taught me a lot about how to be um, more comfortable with talking about money, how to step more fully into my role in development or fundraising with Unity Worldwide Ministries, and how to connect with ministries about this topic as well. He was a professor and theologian and passionate about many things, including ministry, psychology, fundraising, spirituality, social justice, and community. And he actually lived in the community that he served. Truly, each one of us plays a role in helping fund the work of our ministries. And I don't know what money myths you may have picked up along the way, but I know I've heard and others may have as well, don't talk about money. Don't talk about money, especially in the same context of spirituality. Don't talk about money at the table. There's just certain subjects you don't talk about. And he opens that up in such a beautiful, beautiful way that helped me see the power of this work that fundraising and, and opening up to receiving money is actually a ministry unto itself. So each one of us plays a role in helping to fund our ministry that we are running or to support Unity Worldwide Ministries. It helps us to provide an opportunity for individuals and organizations to further our work, whether we are a ministry or we work at Unity Worldwide Ministries, through the giver's intention and commitment. So then our donors, our supporters can support our work through prayer, through volunteering, and through sharing of financial resources. I in, invited one of our volunteers from Unity Worldwide Ministries here today because she gives of her heart and she comes in feeling good and she it seems like she feels even better when she leaves. <laughs> I'm guessing because she enjoys the work that she does. And if she ever can't make it, I can feel that sense of disappointment. She's eager to get back and do her work and what a blessing that is. So whether someone's giving of their time or their talent, their treasure, um, it, is, it, is, it is a way that we um, give them the space to leave the legacy that, that they're meant to, le to leave. We're hardwired for God and we're hardwired for good. And each one of us wants to make a difference in the world. And I think sometimes what we do is we become afraid to, to ask for money or invite volunteers in because we think we might be offending them or we think, oh, that's just too much. I know she's busy. I can't ask her to see if she's interested in that. And the thing is, she's interested in that. 
She wants to support our work. She enjoys our company. She enjoys the work that she does and she knows she's making a difference and that feels amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay for volunteers. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we have such giving hearts in this, in this movement. <clears throat> so again, one of Henry's powerful teachings is that fundraising is a form of ministry. It helps us clarify and articulate our mission. I tell you what, I learned a lot more about the mission of Unity Worldwide Ministries when I wrote a Templeton grant. There's something about asking for money and reaching out and using words that invites us into, why am I here? What are our values? What are my values? And what is the alignment? It's a very powerful process. Henry taught that fundraising, which is also called philanthropy or advancement or development, is a way of saying this, and I'm going to paraphrase his words to align with unity. He says, we have a vision that is amazing and exciting. We invite you into relationship, into community, to share, to extend the resources that the universe has provided you, your energy your prayers, your gifts, and your money toward the powerful work of Unity Ministries. The work that we are led to do, the work that we are called by the divine to do. Did that feel good? It feels amazing to me. It makes it feel a lot more comfortable for me to, um, to connect with people who are inspired by our work, by our vision, by our mission, who are in alignment with our values. So a little bit more about generosity and the psychology of giving. Studies show that people witnessing a generous act experience a rush of dopamine, serotonin, and other feel-good chemicals. It's inspiring just to be in the space with generosity and acts of leadership and kindness. And just as people are traumatized by witnessing violence, carelessness, or unfairness, we are healed and uplifted and inspired by higher deeds. This energizes us to take the next steps on our unique journey to make the world a better place. And that's what calls me to unity. What calls you to unity? What called you in your first visit to a unity church? Or what called you to become a licensed unity teacher or a unity minister or a board member of your unity church? It's because these unity teachings offer us the opportunity to not only change, transform our own lives, our belief system, our ways of being, but to invite our friends and family into it, to bring that energy into our community and ultimately to change the world, which gives me God bumps. <laughs> so according to psychology today, the act of giving to others increases the brain's level of neurotransmitters involved in motivation and reward. So it's like we do it, it feels good, we do it again. It's this beautiful cycle. And it results in what they call a warm glow or the helper's high. Studies have shown that volunteering can boost one's confidence and giving, um, gives a boost in self-esteem and a sense of purpose and meaning in life. And actually, there's a part of the brain that lights up when we give of our gifts, when we share by volunteering and give our financial gifts as well. You know, in Unity, we'll wear sometimes some of us can see auras. That might be kind of cool to see people start to shine and glow as they're giving. You're like, wow, you had a giving day, didn't you? <laughs> You've got something going on. Religious leader and journalist Rabbi Levi Welton explained that the act of giving taps into the core of our spiritual selves. He said it feels good to give because that is the entire purpose of life. He goes on to say that God is the ultimate giver. And we know that we are made in the image and likeness of God. So giving back, giving and sharing who we are helps us access that huge divine energy that lives within, that divine essence that we are. It helps us to access that reservoir of goodness, of divine ideas, of spiritual energy. It helps us tap into the deepest parts 
of our soul. Now, Rabbi Levi realized that the ancient Hebrew word for love, ahava, contains the root ahav, which means give. So love and give are from the same root word. And we know that love is something to be given away. It's not something to, to, to squander. It's not something to hold in our back pocket for forever. It's something to share. And realizing our talents, recognizing what our gifts are and sharing those gifts lead us to greater happiness. I would say that even being a volunteer is much like taking an inventory of what can I do? Who am I? What do I have to offer? And the same for whether we're giving of our financial gifts as well just doing that personal reflection and, and deciding how do I align with my values and how do I take action on that? What is the inspired action that I can take from living in alignment with my values? What does that look like? What does it feel like? And how can I teach this idea? How can I share this so that more people are comfortable with both giving and receiving? So this is what helps us get out of our everyday way of living or our <clears throat> more stressed way of living and open up to possibilities. And it also helps givers align with something greater than themselves, giving to a mission or to a, a project. So there are times though, that we live in what is called the trance of scarcity scarcity. If you break it up, scarcity, scarcity. There are times that we have fear-based thoughts and even times that before our feet hit the ground in the morning, we may have some self-talk that says, there's not enough time and I don't have enough energy. I've been there. I'm not, I'm not enough and there's not enough. So we have that dis-ease, that disease of not enoughness and not enoughness can, can, you know, kill our dreams, our goals, and our vision. But even talking about an act of giving, even talking about volunteerism, hearing a testimony, being a witness to a kind act invites in a, a sense of generosity in ourselves. It invites in serendipity and spiritual coincidence is what I call God winks. There's something about being in that state of flow that opens us up to even more blessings. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. So I love hearing stories in the course of my work when I connect with ministries about those out in ministry and how resources just align perfectly for a project to launch or how someone met someone at just the right time, funds coming together, shifts happening, shifts in consciousness happening that bring about powerful growth and transformation and in results. The building got built, the roof was repaired, the meeting went ahead. The Sunday service happened, the church grew, people grew in consciousness as a result of things coming together. Dennis Green, in his book, The Stewardship System, shares that we are social animals, and, and, I, and I agree with that, we are social animals, and that we need one another to grow into all that we can be. We have the power to take each other higher and not only that, we provide a sort of checks and balances on the community's thinking. What would we do with one without one another? How would we grow? We may have some growth, but I bet you can think back to your last relationship. You had a lot of growth, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or the last ministry you served, when you joined the board, things happen and we grow and we get to decide how am I going to show up now? And how can I allow God to show up through me? So it is in this way, us coming together in, in relationship and in community that helps us evolve, helps us grow together. And this just reminded me of a bumper sticker that I saw back when I was at Unity of Tallahassee. The bumper sticker said, oh, grow up. <laughs> oh, grow up. Oh, evolve. Have you seen the one that says, oh, evolve? <laughs> that's like, that's got to be a Unity person. Yes, that's up. We're, that is us. We're growing up. We're not just children of God. We're adults of God. And we are growing up into all that we can be. 
And we are here to bear witness to what is possible. We're here to bear witness to what is possible. So to understand understand the mindset of givers, we are better able to um, talk about giving and to understand where another person may be coming from. It's good to know why people give, what inspire them. So think back to the last gift you gave. How did you feel giving it? Did you feel a sense of hesitancy or was it free flowing? Did you feel inspired? Did you feel some resistance? Did you give and think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I have one time going to give and I had this dollar amount and then that dollar amount went down and down and down. It was not the $500 that I thought that that my inspiration was like, wow. And then it went down I'm like, okay, what was that about? And can I circle back around to that and see what beliefs or what feelings want to be addressed? Because if I was inspired up here and then by the afternoon I dropped, by the time I wrote the check, is not quite what it what the inspiration was. Hmm, what's that gap in there? So people give to a meaningful project or an organization's mission. People give because they respect an organization's leadership. They give because they admire staff and others who are doing purposeful work at purposeful organizations such as our Unity Ministries and UWM. They give out of a spiritual responsibility or duty. They give to be a part of a cause or a movement greater than themselves. They give because they're hardwired to give. It's just who we are. It's just who I am. Let's say that together. It's just who I am. We're givers. That's who we are. So there's a quite bit of giving happening in the world. There's a lot going on. So speaking of generosity, Over $400 billion a year are given to charitable organizations around the world. Wow, that's a big number. That's a big number. $430 billion. I accidentally wrote million and Shad said, don't you think you need some more zeros? I said, yeah, I do. And this is accurate. $430 billion. There's a lot of giving going on in the world. And a lot of that giving can bless our ministries and the work that we do at UWM. So let's envision more of that funding, our work, our impactful work. We know that our words do not return to us void the vision that we hold for um, our ministries and all that we do to serve, all the ways we serve. As we're clear about that vision and are in receivership training, I believe that that money is gonna flow more easily, effortlessly and joyfully to us. So where is the money coming from? It's coming from where it is now. It's coming to us um, in many different ways. So we've all heard the phrase, God loves a cheerful giver. The universe can sense our ever-expanding consciousness. And the truth is, is we live in a responsive universe. Ask and it is given. So those of you who attended the UWM Silver and Gold Fundraising event last year will recall the tasty nuggets that Shad Groverland, our CEO, shared during his presentation, things that he had not revealed to um, anyone up to this point, except maybe maybe, maybe his leadership team and Erin, <laughs> his wife, maybe a few, but he shared a lot of wisdom that people were just on their seats, um, edge of their seats, listening for. So you're going to want to attend this year to learn more about his vision and direction for Unity Worldwide Ministries. The event is going to be Tuesday, June 27th. It's going to be in the Sheraton Hawthorne Room from 7 to 9 p.m. And be sure to get your ticket. This event is going to support the uh, UWM in funding our education program and international department. Plus, it will also further our work in supporting our ministries to thrive. Dennis is going to share more impactful stories from his life adventures, along with wisdom from his 30 plus years in church development and fundraising, which is also the name of his consulting firm. He's going to be sharing practical tips that you can implement in your ministry, and you're going to walk away with an expanded heart and inspired for your next steps as you increase prosperity in your ministry. So at this event, you're going to get to rub elbows with Shad and Dennis and the UWM board and staff, along with other leaders in the movement, including other development experts. We're open to sponsorships for this event, which will help to underwrite expenses. So expenses, so please reach out to me. Um, I am Diana at unity.org. 
and you can get your ticket now through the Whova app. And this event will be well worth it. We're going to have a great time. We're going to learn a lot, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. So what's next? Well, UWM is going to be offering development and fundraising trainings, plus support sessions with Dennis Green on the topic of capital campaigns for ministry, church fundraising, and prosperity. Also stay in tune for more uh, new thank you letter templates that you can use in your ministry to connect with your donors and your congregants and your prospective donors as well. We're going to have some webinars, and here's a quick listing of them. Cultivating a Culture of Generosity, Abundance, and Growth in Ministry, which is July 20th. Power Up for Prosperity, which is all about Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising. That's August 31st. And then Creating Sacred Space for Grief. We're going to cover the topic of supporting those in your congregation and supporting them and leaving a legacy. And that's November 16th, the week before Thanksgiving. So we invite you to join our UWM Conversations group if you are a credentialed unity leader and also stay in touch with us through our electronic newsletter, The Path, so we can uh, keep you posted on all the supportive events and trainings that we have. And now we're going to have a drawing. I love giving things away. I love singing. She likes holding baskets. This is the voice of God. Okay, you want to pull the first winner? We're going to give away the book, A Spirituality of Fundraising by Henry Nowen. And I'll make sure you get that book if you share your address with me. And the winner is Kathleen Kerswig. Yay! And the crowd went wild. See, they feel good already with the giving that's happening, don't they? It's all about feeling good. And this is the winner of, of the Stewardship System by Dennis Green. Becky Whitehead. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I want you to know that all the rest of the names are, oh, oh, I'll see what I can come up with for you. Okay. I'll, I'll get you a book. But what is that other big, um, what does that say? It says, God bless you. So all the other names were blessed. Just so you know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Again, share your address with me and I'll share your prize with you. We are embarking upon office beautification. And studies show the importance of having beauty um, around us, vibrant energy, order, plants, water, fountains, all help to create a beautiful container, a space that helps to facilitate spiritual energy and the energies of productivity. So this is what we're doing in our office. We're helping to facilitate the spiritual energy necessary to serve and grow the movement. So I want to give a big thank you to Reverend Mr. Sean Moniger. And those of you who know him know that he does go by Reverend Mr. <laughs> Even his email is Reverend Mr. So it's not disrespectful that I call him that. So thank you to Reverend Mr. Sean Moninger and the UWM board for spearheading this project. We began improvements to our office, which will support our staff. And we uh, are so grateful for the support that we are receiving. What are y'all smiling? At? Yep, that's us. So no one can whistle a symphony. It takes a whole orchestra to play it. And so we're all playing our part. Let's explore the next slide where um, I just want to share that we had a great time cleaning out, sprucing up, and now it's time to make a little bit more progress, lots of progress. UWM is excited about the launch of this campaign, and we welcome your inspired interest in our work. So whether you offer a full financial commitment or you offer a pledge and your interest to give, we'd love to hear from you today. Why? Because it's inspiring. Why? Because it feels good to give and it helps to launch campaigns such as this one. So we will follow up with you to answer any questions you have, but feel free to share your interest in this project here in the room by raising your hand, by opening your heart and by uh, throwing up your hand or placing something in the chat online. So now I'd like to welcome to the Zoom screen someone in Unity that you've likely seen before, a longtime minister who've emceed several of our events. He's an out front and center personality with an inspiring soul, a generous soul. 
It's hard to believe that he used to spend much of his work hours behind the scenes in a technical booth. We're so glad he stepped out. Give it up for Reverend Sean, Mr. Mr. Reverend Sean Munninger, Unity Minister in Norwalk. Mute. There we go. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It is it's what it's Wednesday afternoon, and we're going to do something here. I've never done it in person. I've only or I've only done it in person. I've never done it on Zoom. And let's see what can happen here. We're going to do a paddle raise. The last uh, summer at the retreat or at the convention, I don't know how many of you heard me ask for this. Uh, on the first day of the convention, we got a tour of Unity Village, and if all the doors were open, and we could go just pretty much anywhere we wanted to go. So I went upstairs to the new UWM offices. They had moved across the lawn up into the Silent Unity building, and I saw our new offices, and they were sad. It's the best <laughs> word I could say for it. They were sad. You know, there were, UW, UWH had renovated so much of the village, and then there was the UWM offices. I mean, no offense to anyone, I'm selling it the way I saw it, sad that old dirty carpet and 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 uh, and so at the convention the at the business meeting when we were allowed to say something because i heard about all these funds being released for different projects and what have you and so i went up and i i asked is there any funds that could be released to renovate the uwm offices because you know the problem is the staff has to go there every day and we had we there are staff they're, you know, they're the staff of UWM and I felt they needed to be taken care of better than than they were. Uh, we're we as ministers we as uh, Unity people are not supposed to live in poverty. I didn't hear that, and that's what it looked like. It looked like they're living in poverty. The windows were taken away from them from across the way and stuff. What could what could be done? So I asked for that. I got applause from the staff. <laughs> uh, the board had the board of trustees had not yet seen the offices, so they didn't know uh, what they were like. So I, uh, our church, tied what we could towards it, gave what what we could, and then I put a notice on Unity Ministers Discussion Group on on, on the Facebook, and we got a thousand dollars from a, a church, and that that I think is cleared up now, and it's been designated. If you give today. And we what we want you to uh, we do want you to give. This is this is the experiential part of the of the summit. So what we're going to do today is a paddle raise. I've done this for many theaters. I've done it for churches. I've done it for my own, always in person. So we're going to see how this works. Unity of New York was behind in some funds for their rent a couple of years ago before before COVID. And we met with the owners of the theater, and they said, you know, we can't carry you. And you owe, six, I think it was $16,000. I could be wrong. And it was a Friday, and I knew I was speaking there that Sunday. And I said, I'll do a paddle raise on Sunday. We'll have it for you on Monday. And she looked at me like I had two heads. But we had $20,000 by Monday. And all a paddle raise is that's similar to an auction, except you're buying stuff. We are buying stuff for the facility. And so, uh, first of all, let, let's start with, we need $140,000 total for this beautification process. You wouldn't dream. And some have said, well, why doesn't UWH give money since we are renting there? Well, we're not paying rent. We we have the space for 15 years. So, UWH isn't so inclined to invest in that space for us. We, we have to do it. We, the movement, need to take care of our staff. We understand this. They're our, they're our people, and we want to make it nice for them to go to work every day because when they go there, and nobody ever knows how long they'll work at UWM, but, but while they're there, it, it, it should be comfortable and beautiful and an inspiring energy to be, to be working in for all that time. And, and so the whole thing is $140,000. Is there anybody who wants to just give that today? And I'll be off the screen in one second. You can write it right there in the chat box. Do you want to give the whole 140000 And someone's saying, are you kidding me? Don't be ridiculous. That's so silly, Sean. But it's happened before. Trust me, when I've done this, somebody has written a check for the whole entire thing. What we're going to do today is you're going to put the amounts that you do want to give towards specific things. And I'm going to give a specific list here. And we're going to, and if you say, I, I want to give this, you know, you may have to check with your board first, but 
put put what you 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 hope to give uh and write it right into the chat do not put any criticism in the chat we have no time for that kind of distractions we need we, we want to raise funds this isn't a tithe this is a giving above and beyond our tithe this isn't in lieu of now so okay nobody wants to give 140,000 at least that's not been written in yet so our carpet is thirty thousand dollars carpet thirty thousand dollars that's 1,600 squares of carpet. It's $18.75 a square. How many squares would you buy? How many squares would you buy? How can, you know, if you want to give $18.75, fine. Then it's 29000 something cents. Uh, does you want to buy 100 squares? Are there people here today prepared to buy carpet imagine we have to buy carpet for our for our staff for our, to work in at uwm or work upon and, and it's i've seen pictures of it and it looks rather nice okay so you look at that now there's paint it's 300 dollars for labor does anybody just want to pay that up front right now mark it right please write it in the chat room 300 dollars uh for the labor for painting which i think is actually pretty good i'll, I'll cover the paint sean fantastic so we no longer need okay. that now it's a thousand dollars for a total of twenty-five gallons of paint. That's forty dollars per gallon. How many gallons would any one of you like to buy? Would somebody like to buy the whole thing for a thousand dollars? Would somebody want to buy all of the paint so that the staff could go into work and it's like, oh, I can breathe in here again. Oh, it's lovely because uh, really I saw it and I saw the offices right across from UWM. So. They also, they'll buy two gallons of paint at Unity. So now we only need, to, uh, what is it, uh, 25 gallons, 23 gallons paid for. Isn't that cool how we can all do it? And suddenly it comes down. I've done this so many times. So we, we've got two gallons bought. Okay, we've got $200 towards the, toward the yes, you can oh, buy right you, now. You. you can go to the Unity, Unity page, Unity website, and hit the donate button. But make sure you designate it for office beautification so reverend jennifer is buying 10 gallons of paint now that's 12 gallons of paint right now uh so so it's done. so now we only need 12, 12, 12, 25 15 we only need 13 gallons of paint oh another two six i've got need, six gallons here roxanne Gray, 11 six minus gallons six, of paint. 11 minus six is what five i go usually i do better math than this and, and so we need five gallons of paint now, $25. I think you did. Unity of Heartland wants to pay for 10 squares of carpet. So are we all seeing how this works? If we all get on board and we know we're buying specifically what is needed, two more gallons of paint. Sean, did you get that gallons. Roxanne offered six gallons of paint? Yeah, that's the one that was announced, right? Yes, out yes. loud here. So okay, then two great. more. So now we, I believe we need three gallons of paint left. All right, Rachel Gaither's three gallons of paint. There we go. So now Ooh, paint you, is off, off, off the thing here. So we can still use the, the carpet. Now there's a water fountain. They need a water fountain. Believe it or not, a water fountain costs a thousand. Water fountain. We got a water fountain. Diane Scribner here. A thousand dollars. She's going to get the whole water fountain. Thank you, Diane. I love that. Somebody gave a thousand dollars, bought the whole water fountain. Ooh. Now office, office furniture is seven thousand. Oh, we got four more squares of carpet here. I have not been doing the math. I don't know how many squares are left that we need out of the 1,600 squares, but I bet we could need a few more there. Uh, oh, good. Somebody put a, a link on in here in the chat box so that maybe that's done. And if you guys are giving more than like over the carpet, can it can it be that we can put that money towards towards to? Oh no, oh no, carpet. We still need plenty of. Okay, office furniture is seven thousand dollars. So, so we need some. Now, you can give all or any part of that. Office furniture means decent chairs for the staff. Yes, decent chairs. Imagine that decent chairs that support the back and the rear end. Bernadette now, Swanson. Uh, $100 for Bernadette Swanson office furniture. Thank you, Bernadette. Woo! I love that. So now we only need six thousand nine hundred. A thousand dollars. Now we need five thousand nine hundred for office furniture. You see how this works, and it works. Yes, and it's recorded. This is all recorded. It works so beautifully. Like I say, yeah, it could be that you need to you need to check with your board, but but write down, write down now, so so that 
after the enthusiasm of this moment, you're you're still going to be enthused because we think about uh, the office staff. Think about those individual people who all benefit. Ten more squares of uh, carpet just got bit or uh, bought bit bought seventy five dollars more for towards furniture. So so now three hundred dollars towards furniture. A thousand dollars from Sylvia Sumter for office furniture. Thank you, Sylvia. Woo, woo, woo. This is wonderful. I, I we're probably down at least about four thousand dollars now into it. Another hundred dollars towards office furniture. Isn't this a wonderful experience to do? I love this. It makes it. So oh, UWM is going to match a thousand dollars. Oh, Shad and Aaron and I are going to match a <laughs> thousand dollars. They're going to match a thousand dollars. Two hundred dollars more for office furniture. Do we have a total for office furniture, what we've taken in so far? Diana, can, can anybody check that? Oh, I saw the Unity of New York. I, I'm not. I'm not. It's okay. being calculated. Another 150 towards office furniture. Yeah, I haven't been able to because it's the page is small. But we're, but we're coming in at thousands towards the office furniture. Now, the next part is office stations. That's thirty thousand dollars. That's thirty stations at one thousand uh, dollars each. Jackie Fernandez has her hand up. One station for a thousand dollars from Jackie. Thank you, former Unity Worldwide Ministries employee. Thank you. We love that. Thank you. A thousand dollars for carpet here. I, I see this going on here. So then thirty thirty stations for a thousand dollars each. I would encourage you to, to go to your board and say, could we, could we board that? Now, some of you know you, you, that that's not in, in the cards for you. But is there $18.75 for a square of carpet? So another $500 to her office furniture. One square of carpet. I love that. See, see, it, it, the, the way we look at it there, if a thousand of us each gave a dollar, we would have all of the office stations. It's such simple math that way. And and if 500 of us uh, gave $2, we would do it. And, and so to look at that, and, and then there's plants for $400. They, they, the staff has their eye on some plants. Plus $400. Okay, plants covered by Don Barton. Okay, plants are covered. Thank you for the plants. Hey, Reverend, Mr. Sean, this is yes, James Pizer. I'm the technology manager with uh, UWM. Hey, James. Uh, I, I wanted to say something real quick because I just feel like God pushing on my heart at the moment. You know, I want you all to understand what it is you're really purchasing. You know, we do come there and we work every day. I was diagnosed with uh, COPD earlier this year. And for me, it's real, it was really, really hard to breathe. Each day was a challenge for me to come into work, but I came into work because I believe absolutely in what I'm doing there. And every one of us, we believe absolutely in what we were doing there. And it wasn't just hard to breathe. It smelled that carpet was nasty. It looked like when we took all of the furniture off, it looked like people had died everywhere. You know, we laugh about it, but the sad thing is, it's true. You know, the colors of the walls. I want everybody to look at my arm. You see the color of my skin? That was the color of the walls, but dirty. You know, I could have taken my shirt off and stood next to the wall, and I would have blended right in. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I just want to thank everybody who's offered so far because it really means the world to us. And we're so thankful that you're willing to take care of us in that way. So thank you so much. And thank you for those that are willing to give and those that will give. We really, truly appreciate it. Thank you, Jane. This is wonderful. Well, I see another $500 for wherever we need it within the beautification program. That I works. see five more squares of carpet here in the in the chat room remember you can if you just want to do it right online now you can go to that donate button but make sure you mark it you designate it office beautification and put what you put down for it so so when the office when celia receives that she can say oh it's for this it's for this it's for this and we're going to make it easy for everybody to get what they want uh before we close this out i want to give any other opportunities for giving here I want to give $200 to the education technologies. I know how important that is. Anybody for the education fund? 
Yes, this is our, for our new learning management system and how much it's going to um, make it easier for our employees and for uh, those who teach and for our students to have the information be organized and easy to work with. Yay, 200 to education from Jean Marie. Love that. I see another, another 100, 200 100 from Ann Hickey. From Becky gave 100 for education. We got another 100 for carpet. We got another five squares of carpet. Uh, $1,000 for cubicle, another cubicle bot. We got hands up. Keep announcing, please. We've got the plants covered. Is there anything that can swirl around to or can part of yours swirl to something else? Okay, we've got we've got that covered. We've got another hundred for plants, and then a hundred of Dawn's will go to something else. Okay, Thank 100, you. hundred for education. Two hundred and fifty for wherever it's needed from. Okay, and I see two hundred fifty. Urban for school. Carpet. Thank you, Urban School. Thank you, Sandra Campbell. Well, and I see another two hundred fifty for carpet. Another two hundred fifty in general. Two hundred fifty for education from Edith Washington. This is beautiful. Do you see how much fun this is? How exciting it is that this morning we had about Valerie Mansfield. A hundred dollars from Valerie Mansfield for wherever it's needed most. Great, but that means within the beautification program, gang. Please know that 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 that's my function here, is to raise up for that and this education program. So it, it always helps if you're specific, because then when you go to, if you come to convention and you go upstairs and you visit the U UWM offices and you see, oh, I helped pay for this. I participated as a unity member of the movement. I helped, I, I made a difference. As our education program progresses, you can realize, oh, I made a difference in this because I listened and I, and I gave. I gave, this is so far above tithing. This is this is the the exercise, the spiritual exercise of giving, and to know oh, and so as you see this work for today, you can see how to do this with your own church. If you ever need my help with doing it your own church, you let me know. But I it's Rev Mr. Sean at Gmail dot com if you want to talk to me. But I'm not Mr. Sean. That's just my email address. I'm actually Rev Sean Moninger. And uh, so, but we got another hundred dollars for carpeting. I don't, do you know how many squares of carpeting have been bought today? $200 for, for Shad's office chair. That's very thoughtful and very specific. <laughs> 250 for beautification for, from uh, Unity of Austin. Unity of Austin. Thank you, Unity of Austin. Thank you, everyone. So, gang, I think we're going to close this part of the giving down, but don't stop giving. Keep doing, think thank about you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Woohoo. Bless us all. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Our energy is going to blow the roof off today. So as this presentation winds down, we're just going to keep the energy up. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. We're going uh -huh. to allow our hearts to overflow with a sense of gratitude and high expectation for the future. We are in this together. And I'm so glad we had the opportunity to connect today. And I'm going to close with some inspiring words by Charles Fillmore. We pray with clear intention as we hold steadily to the thoughts of the omnipresence of universal supply. We allow our hands, our hearts, and our heads to be used in the grace of giving and receiving. And so it is. Amen.